Good morning campers. Uh, just want to bring you to uh, a slight little bit of news that I've got. Uh, now we're all talking about Fukushima and how is it getting covered up? I mean that's why some of you guys are watching this video you're saying well there's no news about Fukushima and you're probably searching the web in, in search of information. And of course we, we sort of look at Greenpeace and lots of people are angry with Greenpeace and others and they're saying well why aren't they you know getting out there and telling us about this stuff you know what's 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 happening here um, and I've been guilty of that actually I've been, saying, been angry with Greenpeace and things uh, because of the lack of nuclear uh, news that they're getting out um, and, and sorry Greenpeace because I, I've actually found out why um, uh, the actual technical aspects of how how uh, this happened um, so I, I'm going to zero in here on the Science Media Centre UK, which is based in London. Uh, actually, uh, it has bits here and there. There's Brighton, that's where the uh, uh, sort of some of it is as well. The address. But the bottom line is, is that it started up ten years ago, and uh, it's a charity, and it basically. wasn't submitting accounts for 10 years that, that were on the internet <clears throat> and I think that's because they're just a very small uh, income coming in um, and uh, I think there's uh, some sort of get out that you, know, you don't have to submit uh, accounts or something but they've only got accounts for the last two years and, and really after Fukushima um, so what happened was um, <clears throat> I, looked a li I looked into this a bit further and, and it, it's, it's turned into a, a bit of a thing. Alright, so as I looked into the uh, accounts in the charity website in 2011, they were they mentioned Fukushima and they said that they were very proud that they got an emergency team and sort of good backup science support uh, for the media um, and uh, you know during the Fukushima, um, I think they called it incident and tsunami with something like that, uh, a bland word, it wasn't a nuclear disaster or a meltdown or anything else. Um, and uh, they were really proud that they sorted out all the bad science that was going around at the time and that was people saying things like, well there's a, there is a meltdown there. And they were saying, no there's no meltdown. No, no, Tepco was saying, no meltdown. And the BBC was saying, no meltdown and uh, no, no uh, health effects and these other things. Um, and this was basically because the scientists, after about two days, you, you probably saw Chris Busby on there for a couple of days initially uh, and, and other um, sort of uh, people, and all of a sudden uh, the news stopped in America and in uh, the UK uh, a couple of days in, you know, and, uh, and then it was getting harder and harder to find sort of decent information because people were just saying there's no meltdown and <coughs> you know, we all saw the uh, um, what was happening over there and we knew it was quite bad and we were getting science reports here and there and uh, anyway then then CREAD brought out on April 12th CREAD brought out their uh, warning to pregnant women and young children in France which would have included for the whole of Europe and they also said that ten times worse it would be in America so there would probably be you know nobody drinking the milk in, you know, in America but anyway, that, that was the science that was going on that I could see. And, and in reality, <coughs> the BBC and all the tabloids, uh, most of the tabloids, uh, pressed out uh, this information. It was coming from certain uh, scientists uh, you know, that we know. Uh, there's uh, Geraldine Thomas, you've seen her at 6 p.m. on a tab talking about bananas and nuts and cigarettes and saying how bad they were. And radiation from Fukushima isn't a problem. Um, in comparison. Well, um, <coughs> there was uh, Richard Wakeford saying that the doses aren't high enough and uh, you know all this type of stuff. Um, well, I'm not going to go into that right now, but what I will say is that uh, I'm just going to give you a little breakdown of, um, of who funds uh, the Science Media Centre UK. Uh, and that would be um, Basically, the people that have funded it were Monsanto, um, and in Monsanto, they, they supply science advisors for GMO advice. Okay, 
uh, that you don't get the anti-GMO guys. Uh, and if they do, they just say, oh, they're anti-GMO and therefore any findings they find is wrong. Uh, but the pro-GMO guys are allowed to do it and that is the right science. Uh, and this is the science media centering doing science better than the media or something like that. Then we've got EDF and indeed EDF nuclear. We can say that science advisors are um, from the nuclear industry with the exception of Geraldine Thomas and she's, she's from the sort of the health industry uh, but it is uh, nuclear health. Uh, but maybe we can find another connection with her. Um, so basically, um, we've got Shell, and we're talking fracking in the Arctic, right? So if you think fracking's bad, and these studies coming out from America and in England, we're going, no, no, no problem with fracking. Um, and Arctic as well, obviously, no mention of Greenpeace and uh, well, very little mention of Greenpeace and what they're trying to do to stop Gaz, uh, Gazprom and Shell uh, destroying the Arctic with uh, an oil disaster which is likely to happen <coughs> in the conditions you find there. Uh, we also found funding uh, the Science Media Centre, Pfizer and Dow Chemicals, uh, yes, the Bhopal and Pfizer. Oh. Uh, and you can think, well, why are the press doing uh, anodin promotions and vaccination promotions and all sorts? We don't see people saying that vaccines are bad or what the hell do you want to take an antigen a day for, try your diet. I, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. But those people aren't allowed to say their piece. Imperial College. Uh, oh, yeah. Imperial College. That's uh, where the Chernobyl tissue bank is. And, um, oh, uh, Geraldine Thomas. Uh, and uh, actually, the Imperial College University uh, basically uh, also promotes the SMC, you go on their website, they're promoting the SMC, uh, cracking little video, I, I copied it, um, I'll post it up later at some point with some others. Uh, BBC also uh, funded, it's BBC Worldwide actually, the private end of the BBC and uh, oh and the SMC trains the BBC journalists in, uh, in how to do science journalism, uh, more importantly how to contact their advisors who work for the corporations. Um, okay, I think, uh, <laughs> I suppose I might as well mention that uh, the two people, you know, Fiona Fox and her friend, uh, who I forget at the moment, um, both worked for the BBC. Well, one one did a bit, of, uh, I think an internship with them, I think that was Fiona Fox, I think. And uh, the other one is uh, presently one of the, uh, the department heads, I think, in the BBC, of one department or other, I'm not sure which. Um, I do have all the links and details. Um, also, we're talking about, uh, yeah, there's been no science from independent scientists, you know, a large, fairly busby, uh, there are others, um, but we don't see them. And, uh, and Greenpeace, uh, Creerad, uh, as far as I'm aware, Bologna in Norway, the big uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, well actually I'll come back to Bologna, um, but um, yeah, and so basically, uh, yeah, the C SMC and the BBC and, uh, you know, they, they've, they kind of support one another. Um, in terms of personnel and, and the corporation. Um, so I would say that uh, I looked at, said, looked at the charity uh, accounts and they're only around for the last two years. So um, and they've they, uh, got a quarter of a million quid uh, in a year um, and they're only getting small payments so that they can say that you know that none of these huge corporations, Coca-Cola and all the others uh, that are paying this small amount of money to the SMC to provide scientists uh, is fair and uh, unbiased uh, science. It's the, the, the real science, I think, the right science, I think. Uh, there's a, a quote from uh, uh, Ms. Fox. And, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, um, then I was sort of found Ms. Fox in the Leveson inquiry and they were about phone hacking. And you know, I've been hacked if you watch my other videos. Um, and I got hacked at the same time as this uh, the uh, Daily Mail phone hacking squad were doing their job. And 
and then basically the uh, police were found to be holding the corporations that were doing hacking, which might have explained my 300% increase in insurance. Um, but uh, they found the corporations' insurance and what have you were using uh, the, the, the police system, which was the tempora system, I believe. Um, so they were holding that back because they couldn't talk about tempora, where the insurance were getting their information from. Um, and uh, and it, it kind of why the press and the uh, government have reached a, a stalemate, if you like. <laughs> Uh, but, but Mrs. Fox turned up there because, you know, obviously they couldn't actually, the police did a, a lot of arrests and there was uh, court cases going through. So basically what happened was that stopped Leveson calling witnesses from those court cases. So the hacking thing never really got dealt with um, properly by, by Leveson. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but Mrs. Fox was there and, and she basically just attacked the, uh, the science media and saying what well, we know better than the media does about science and uh, and, and stuff like that and uh, she even drew up uh, some uh, proposals for how the uh, uh, media should uh, uh, should be doing the science um, <clears throat> now that's kind of not a free and fair press it's uh, in scientific terms we're shutting down debate and uh, allowing corporations to make the right science and, and then we kind of have to trust that and there'll be no oversight um, so if you're okay with that you're probably okay with the SMC and of course the SMC was in Japan and it closed down when the thyroid uh, issues came up um, when I say closed down I think it's still running but they closed that website down because it's a bit embarrassing uh, kind of half expecting the SMC in the UK to do that at some point um, but uh, yeah just make sure if you do an investigation on them, uh, copy all their videos. The uh, best thing to do is use one of these cameras uh, because they're not downloadable very easily. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, that's it really. And um, yeah, there's been lots of little interesting things going on in my life, and I'm uh, been very busy. So to nuclearnews.net um, uh, people that, that uh, were wondering what the hell I've been doing, and I've been doing some strange posts and things like this. Um, I'm basically doing a lot of research, as you can see. I've been reading 2,000 page Leveson report, you know, and um, very interesting stuff about about um, <laughs> about how to uh, how to kill science. That's 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 the way I look at it. Anyway, I'm going to leave this uh, quite a short video. Um, I was just letting you know what was going on. Obviously, my YouTube guys are going to get this, and um, yeah, once again, that's why I've been very quiet. And I think one or two of you know what I've been digging around in. Uh, so we're getting there now. I'm getting there now, and uh, I will uh, I will definitely uh, post up uh, probably a few articles because I can't believe how huge this is. This is uh, this is quite big. SMCs, um, which were around for about ten years, all of a sudden, bang! They become big. They're getting funded by all the corporations. Science dies on the news. The Leveson inquiry happens. They don't look at the hacking uh, because they can't, because <laughs> of tempora, which we know about now. But they still can't look at it because we can't actually admit it. And uh, yeah, you certainly won't get any uh, advisors going on talking about tempora which is the GCHQ's uh, spy system, which is apparently much better than the NSA one. Something to be proud of, perhaps, um, unless you're the target of it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's it, really. Um, yeah, I'm feeling like Alex Jones. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid. Um, this is the sort of stuff George Monbiot used to do, actually, isn't it, this kind of research, just before he became a, a science media centre spokesman. Sorry, George. See you later anyway.